hate puppies. Good podcast. I feel threatened. Hi, Harry. You all right? Yeah, I was just working through some stuff. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Inside the Pallet House, the only podcast dedicated to solving first world problems, helping you figure out where you should retire, and what beer you should be drinking this weekend. Hmm. Yeah, I threw a twist in there. A little twist. A twist. A little, it's a little different. Yeah, we'll What's see. What's a twist? We'll see if uh, the beer this week's any good. I'll give you a hint. We need it. We need one. It's been a run. I'll give you a hint. I went with a brewery that has never scored well here. Oh, all oh, right. Oh, that means means a lot. Victory. Ironically, <laughs> victory. That's the. Uh, I got you some. Oh, uh, nice. Right. Yeah, that's the little teaser for forty minutes from now. Exciting. So, do it. Do it. Doing these podcasts is hard, man. <laughs> People don't know. They have no idea. People don't know. <clears throat> Again, yeah. just getting the three of us together is... I bet we sent 25 or 30 oh, yeah. text messages over the last five to seven days. Yeah, trying For to sure. figure out when the hell we're going to do this. It's, it used to be easier. Like, it was just we showed up at the same time, but like, it's hard now. Now it's you can't really even hard. show up at the same time. When you no. said that tomorrow night you could get here maybe by 10, I was like... Oh. <laughs> That means I maybe will get to bed before midnight. Yeah. And that's a big maybe. But we still have tonight. We never know what's going to happen. I'm hoping it's not crazy because it is a Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Like the lamest night I of the I was still week. 10 minutes late tonight. Yeah, it happens. But these things are hard to do. I mean, last week we did the podcast. Yeah. We took the, took the thing out. I was using the computer before the podcast to do pre-show. Yeah, you immediately went from finishing the podcast of trying to put it on your computer yeah because i had to go like i was leaving town the next morning i was like now nah, i gotta get this done computer was working went to turn on the computer computer was dead and i was like what the hell so plugged it in still dead can't get it to turn on i've tried everything in my power it doesn't turn on so i was like you know what i'll use the work computer in a pinch drove that bitch all the way down to pinehurst only to figure out that it does not have an SD card slot. Ooh. I was like, oh, oh sweet. So now I've got an SD card and another computer that won't work. So I couldn't do that. No so one else I, had a computer with an SD card? No. Nope. So I had to race back here. They've been then, slowly taking everything cool off your computers now. I was even looking at a computer like, I'll get, and I don't have the money for a computer. I, I haven't talked about this openly on the, I don't think I have. How much yeah. debt I'm in? Did oh, I bring yeah. it up? I think you do. You have. Okay, dude. It was an exorbitant amount of debt. And so I am like... How was your four-day trip to Pinehurst? It was good. <laughs> okay, cool. It was good. <laughs> cool. Good. It, it, more, more money. More what? money. Find no out way. Every course there, $200. To fly. I was like, oh, sweet. Well, was it great. was your first time going, so you kind of got blindsided about it. Was blind- no, actually, this year was different. Usually, we pay everything up front, and so it's like a sunk cost months ago. Right. This year, we just had to pay for the house. And then we got there, and it's like, now you get to swipe... I was like, son of a bitch. So it added up quick. Another another trip, just adding up quick. That's just how it works. Just do like I do and don't do anything and go anywhere. You'll be you'll be back in the black in no time. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty easy. There it is, looking for the right one. <laughs> That's all I heard in Pinehurst. They're like, hey, you want to play golf? That's hey, your theme music. You want a hot dog? Hey, you need a oh. beer? Oh, you need six beers. Did I bet you the beers are what eight bucks a piece. Oh, you always get a deal if you buy six. Well, yeah. sure. That's always what they're like. It'll only be like twenty five dollars if you get six. Oh, oh. make you, it six. So it's only twenty five dollars. I only have to pay twenty five dollars for five dollars worth of beer. Six what Miller a steal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, no, did you, oh, did y'all do it? Y'all always. It, it, it makes me nervous and. Shiver just thinking of it. Did you get? Did you boys play? I'll, I, before I before I get to that, I am the worst golfer in the world. I mean, the worst. Yeah, I ended up. Oh losing. yeah, did you win? I lost every single match I played. Everyone by day two, they came to the realization they were like, "Well, you look at that. Everybody's won money because this one's a little different than our other trip." And like. You have an opportunity to win. Oh yeah, money this every isn't day. the drunken Ryder Cup. No, this one's different. So everyone has an opportunity. There's a there's a big ante that goes in, and then every match ends up paying out at the end of it. 
by the end of day two, everybody had won money at some point. And they were like, well, except for one person. He knows who he is. And I was like, oh, well, it has to be me because I know for a fact. <laughs> so I didn't win. And then so on the last day, I decided to like double down. I was like talking shit. I was like, no, no, no. We're putting extra money on this round. Let's do it. Failed miserably. Lost no. that. Then we went over to Pinehurst and we were doing the big party meal. Yeah. And then the credit card roulette Credit came out. card roulette. I, I, oh, I want to puke man. every time I hear this. I mean, I was like... <clears throat> Everyone was like, I know you're not doing it. And I was like, I, I, I'm due for a win. Like, I lost three out of four last time. Yeah, but how much would you win? $70. So, it was what it netted out to. Yeah, like, yeah, everyone yeah, at the table yeah. would have owed $70. And to, so you put $70 in the pot to win. That would have been your win. What's the L? The L was like 500 some. I don't see why anyone would want to do that. There's, I don't think there's a... No one wins. No one wins. Yeah. Well, all of us that didn't pay won. Not. Mm. And I count myself in that bunch. No, you finally won. <laughs> I finally got a W. I was nice. like, I got, my mind was the first one out of the hat. I was like, girl, do not screw me. How, so how did y'all do it? Did you pull them all, one out at a time until there's only two left? And then last man standing pays it all. Last credit card in her hand pays it all. That's the best way to do it. Because if. If you do it the other way, it's anticlimactic. Like the first one comes first out. First one yeah. comes out. And this done. way, you get a lot of people cheering, high five. So oh, does, yeah. ev- does everyone else pay for the tip? Oh, it's all included. Oh, okay. Oh, everything is included in Absolutely. this one. Absolutely. Oh, because well, yeah. I was going to say, oh. if you like, you're the loser, you're going to be like, I'm tipping you 10%. No, you like, get the bill, and then you fa- factor out what the tip is, and then you divide it by however many people are gosh. in. Gosh. So fortunately, I won that, which actually. Would you do this, Ray? No, I'm, I'm pretty stingy. I, I'm very cheap with my money. Well, the best way to be cheap is just to win. We have, it's easier said than done. I get it. <laughs> I get it. I'm usually the big loser. I've done it once, and it was when I was like living paycheck to paycheck, and it was for like, it might have been a hundred and some bucks, you know? And it crushed me. It literally took, I was like, I'm going home for the night now. Like, I'm done. I can't. I can see you doing that too, like being like, screw this, I'm out. Yeah, like, I, I'm paying and I'm going home. Like, this is it. Last week we were in uh, Roanoke, uh, Jill and I. We had done a, she was a part of the Virginia Council for CEOs. We had a big dinner at a restaurant and all the guys whip out their credit card. You're like, ready? And I'm like, heart palpitations. Jill's like, we're not doing that. You know, and, yeah. the, and the guys were like, okay, okay, okay. But it was a it was a thousand dollar meal, yeah. yeah. And they were just gonna it was gonna happen, and I was like, we're not involved. We'll yeah. pay our share, you yeah. know. And that's usually there's always a couple people who will who will bounce out, right? But like, not on these guy trips, right? Like it's there's usually one or two guys that oh, that y'all be allow like, that. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I don't you see that happening. I mean, you catch a lot of you catch a lot of shit. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, the shame bell goes off. Shame, shame. <laughs> but I mean, look, you can't force someone. To do, there's one guy there who doesn't drink, and so yeah, he's so like, uh, he's there. like, why in the world? He's like, my tab is fifteen dollars. Right. I didn't know y'all had any friends that didn't drink, especially that would go on that trip because that sounds like a drink fest. You know, as I get older, the number of my friends who don't drink steadily increases every year. Well, that checks out probably for everyone, right? I would, I would assume. Yeah. Like when you're when you're in your twenties, everybody drinks. Yeah. By the time you get in your 30s, you know a couple of people, you get in your 40s, and like, there's people that don't drink. Yeah. And and it's always for various reasons. Yeah, in your 30s, you start meeting people that are like, well, in your 20s, you drink almost daily. Yeah. And then in your 30s, you're like, yeah, I'll get after it on Friday or Saturday. Mm-hmm. And then in your 40s, you're like, well, I might have been or used to be, or I know some alcoholics, so I had to stop, you know, yeah. or I'm getting healthy now, you know, I'm making up for lost time. But like you said, various reasons. There's always various reasons. Yeah. There's some people that like, I, there, there's one guy I know that he's like, nah, man, I had a problem. And I look at him like the most upstanding. Like, I'm like, you yeah. never, you never had a problem. I've never seen you have a problem. I've never seen you do anything strange. He's like, nope, I definitely had a problem. And yeah. so his problem must have been occurring when we weren't looking, you yeah, know what I mean? And he was in the just shadows. Like, yeah. Which he's like, you know, I just, I wasn't happy with myself. So and then you think. take Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday off, mm-hmm. correct? Except yeah. for today. Yeah. Except yeah for which tonight. screwed me. So now here I am having a beer. So I actually have to have blood work done. And I had to push it all the way out till Tuesday of next week. Oh, wow. 
because I was like, well, I don't want to be drinking the night before I do blood work. I did that once. Like I got real, I'm, and it was when I was drinking, you know, a lot and I had a doctor's appointment one morning at like eight or nine in the morning and I wasn't even thinking about it. And I just sat up, stayed up late and drank a bunch of liquor and I felt like hell rolling into that doctor's and my blood work was weird and I was like, oh. I wonder if you knew how much I drank the night before. Like, mm-hmm. I, I wasn't yeah. forthcoming with the information, sure. yeah. you know? I've, Nobody's really forthcoming to their doctor. I filled no. out my intake form. I'm pretty, <laughs> I try to be as forthcoming as possible because I want them to be like. Those numbers are wild, though, when they're like, how many drinks do you have in a week? And you're like, I mean, what's a drink, right? I, then, I didn't even have the heart to, like, give them a total number because yeah. I was afraid that'll look a little weird. So I actually was like, Thursday, you know, say six. It said Friday, 10, Saturday, 10, Sunday, variable. <laughs> right. Because I don't know what su- Sunday is sometimes a couple there's, drinks. Right. Sometimes there's a gray Sunday area. Sunday is the biggest drinking day. Of the- I don't know what that is. So you're, so, so you're going 35 to 40 average. I would assume so. Yeah. Yeah. And those are beers mostly. No, not Brendan. Mostly beer. You think so? Yeah. It'd be really hard to have 35. I mean, not hard. I could do it. I mean, we could all do it. Yeah, I could do it. Well, when I stopped drinking beer, I, I got off beer for a while and just was making liquor drinks every night. And I'd still have six of those. Yeah. I mean, it's not over a course of four hours. Like, it's doable. Yeah. When uh, when was the last time you had a drink? I just hit 11 months. That's yeah, nice. It's been almost a year now. Yeah, I was about to say, you got to be coming up on a year. It was uh, but whatever Memorial Day. I always get Memorial in Labor, Labor Day. Day. Yeah, it was the day after Memorial. Memorial Day was the last time I had a drink. So we're throwing down on Memorial. That's when I uh, had ten beers and didn't feel anything, and I was like, "What the holy hell am I doing?" Yeah, your blood work's always fucked. Yeah. <laughs> like, what is happening right now? I drink every day. Good for you. I mean, it's like I mean, it's and it's cocktails. I rarely yeah. have a beer. And if I do, it's maybe like if I've just got done doing some manual labor, but every night's a cocktail. Two. Two is my limit. If I have a third, you know, it's everybody, you know, people around me are like, are you okay? But once I get to that, once two. Is that is, even in a social setting? You only have two? I try only to have two in a social setting. Uh, Fridays and Saturdays are a little different, but during the week. Yeah. Um, I wait. I'm a waiter, so I'd like wait until the end of the night. You know, I'll eat, you know, have, you know, with dinner, I'll have water or something. But then 10 o'clock rolls around, cocktail. And then I'll take a cocktail to bed. Yeah. That is oh, so Does it help you sleep? Not. It probably helps you sleep. Well, I have other things to help me sleep, but. <laughs> 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 Fucking Marilyn Monroe over here. <laughs> <laughs> However, but yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll sit in bed and just chill. It takes me a while to kind of settle. Mm-hmm. Uh, my mind races. So I'll take a cocktail to bed, just chill. Yeah, when I was drinking a lot, like, I don't think my sleep was bad. I mean, technically, I'm sure it was awful, but, like, sure. it definitely put my mind at ease. Like, when my head hit the pillow and I was tired, it was, like, done. Done. Like, I'll sleep well tonight. This will be this will be a lot of sleep for a Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty excited about it. All this beer talk's making me kind of want another, another beer. I got you. Yeah, you thanks, Troy. That's my guy right there. That guy's money. You know what See, else is money? All, all the money we're going to have to spend but, on the damn podcast equipment. It sounds like oh, you I, and Taylor on yeah, Squeezing Lemons I, I, just had your first uh, major snafu in again, the podcast world. Again, Thank you know, Taylor and I, we you know, we question ourselves whether or not we need to take two days or three days to do these podcasts because we drink. We make these cocktails. This week we did, um, uh, you know, like summer cocktails or whatever. Um, and we had them. We have a new board. Uh, we have a new SD card. We started freaking recording. It was great. We got yep. done an hour and 20, hour and 30 minutes in. We were high-fiving each other at the end, and we said, that was, best episode. that was the best episode ever. I was like, okay, so now we need to make a title, so let's go back. Let's listen to a couple of things. He says, uh, he goes, shit, it's not on this thing. And I was like, what are you talking about? It's hell, dude. And whole episode. The Brutal. whole episode. We had and we, one. we we re- revamped our uh, intro as well. 
So we have a new intro oh, nice. and, and all the things. And it's all of a sudden it's like, what the fuck, right? Like, where is it? And so we're two days in and he still hasn't found it on the SD card. I hope it's buried somewhere in there because there's all these little folders. I, we've, we've done that before where we discovered it about an hour in when we were recording. Mm -hmm. That all of a sudden we were like, wait, it's not recording. Like, And we had to just start over and redid it. And We like literally redid it. Redid it where like if we had found both recordings, I would have been interested to like listen to them because we were doing like the same jokes, but like nothing hit the the second time around like it did no, the first it time horrible. around yeah. it's right and so i and i talked to taylor it's like how are we gonna how are we gonna intro this how are we gonna talk about this we're screwed we're gonna have to do basically a whole brand new podcast yeah minus the cocktails and if it's you know it's gonna be friday or saturday night because we want to release on saturday or sunday you know do we want to get i mean i will say on podcast nights i have more than two cocktails yeah yeah, <laughs> you have to as many as y'all taste test. Oh Absolutely. man, we had uh, we had three. We pulled out three bourbons. Oh wow! Oh, uh, we were drinking bourbon straight. It was a good freaking night. <laughs> it was Monday, well, and it was a Monday. It was a good night until, <laughs> until you know the whole SD incident. Uh, like, Anyone whose podcast for any amount of time has had a technical glitch, like and that's that. what we said. We were like, it was time. We're now you're real podcasters. That's right. Like, oh, okay. All now right. you're yeah. real. I'll take that. No, oh. that's that's it, man. And I thought I was going to have that problem last week when I was like, wait, I can't do this. Fortunately, I had dropped a computer years ago, shattered the screen. Screen still works. It just it's all fucked up and yeah. things all dented and busted. Is it all pixelated and glitched out and shit? It's not really pixelated so much. Like the screen still functions, but mm -hmm. it's a touch screen. Now you can't touch it because you'll cut yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's, and it's all dented and like there's exposed stuff and it's just, it screwed up. Well, a couple of years ago, I was telling Ely how I had busted this thing. And he was like, actually my son. Who? Ely. Oh, that name sounds familiar. He was on the best of. Yeah, yeah. I thought I remember go. that guy. So he was like, Well, can I borrow it from my from my son? He wants to game and like I don't want to buy him a computer, so like he can game on that. And I was Ow, like, it's got a broken ass screen. Yeah, but he doesn't need to touch the screen. And it is he was just like, Let me see if he likes it. Okay. Like that was his logic. He's like, Let's let him for like a month, see what he thinks. So Ely brought it back over here about a month ago. Oh wow. And I was like, oh, okay, well, now I've got this old turd. I couldn't bring myself to throw it out. So when this thing busted, when I came back, I went up, turned that thing on, and it was like, <laughs> <laughs> it was so tired. It like Roblox was popping up yeah. and all this gaming stuff and all these like widgets started opening. I was like, oh, what is he? He jacked that His little up, kid just he? like went to work on it, which is fine. That's what it was for. I'm assuming it was his 13 year old. Yeah, which was probably 10 at the time. Yeah. And so I edited the podcast on that. And like when I went and hit just export the MP3, that bitch took 22 minutes to just take the file and just move, just move it. it over. I was like, this is brutal. I was like, that's now I remember why I got rid of it. <laughs> it has no RAM. And now on top of that, it's running a thousand things in the background. Yeah. So this is not tenable. I can't yeah. I can't do this for long, but that is how it's going to be happening this week, hence the debt problem. I can't afford to do it, so I'm just going to have to... Do you have any more trips planned? He always has trips planned. I got an anniversary trip coming up, and my, I my can't wife... can't fuck that up. Well, this one, this was actually kind of funny. I was like, honey, we're going here, and it's like this really high-end place. And I, and I was like, but I can't really afford it. And she was like, I'll split it with you. Like, I know you got... And I was like, you know what? All right, this is great. Like, this is helpful. But I was still looking at dropping like $800 a night. Well, then when I went to sign up for the thing, all of a sudden, like, it raised the price $50. I was like, hey, wait, wait, that doesn't add up. a night. I was like, that doesn't add up. That's not the number they quoted. It's $100 more. And so, like, I was like, I went back and entered the code again, and the prices had gone up. Like, a room must have sold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, like, they bumped the price. And she was like, this is ridiculous. And she found another place, like, down the street. That's like a third of the price for the whole damn week. I was like, oh, oh we can do that. Right. Like, yeah. All right. So now now that she's involved, all of a sudden she's like, oh, yeah, she's more financially prudent. Mm -hmm. It's funny how that works. It's it's great, though, because I saw it in this place. They said they wouldn't allow kids because they are romantically inclined. 
So no kids were allowed there. And I was like, Hell are yeah. we going to be like fucking everybody? Like swinging? Uh, it place? could be. Like, oh, yeah. I was like, this is a very interesting place. And then I did find that they have a bathtub, like a Cialis fucking commercial. Ah. They have one of those big clawfoot tubs that sits out in the yard. And it said that it's completely private and you can have it for like alone time. And there's like a gate that closed. I was like, hold on. They have, they rent out a fuck tub. Nice. At this place. I could not bring myself to go in the dirty fuck tub. Yeah, that would be weird. Like a hot tub's bad enough, but at least I know there's chlorine in there. Yeah. They're probably just hosing that thing out. I yeah. don't know. I mean. I don't know, man. I bet it's, a, I, I bet it'd be all right. You ever fucked in water? Yep, sure. It's overrated. Yeah, it's way, overrated. way overrated. Like from from jump. Yeah, it's not as it's good not as you as think. Good. Right. You're like I'm surrounded by liquid. That liquid somehow ruins all the liquid you want. Yeah. Correct. I don't understand, how, and I don't care right. what water it is. Yeah. I think you'd have to do it in like vegetable oil. Yeah. Before it would ever be like, hey, hey, actually, that's a great. That's idea. a great idea. But fill that tub with vegetable <laughs> oil. <laughs> You get in there, just. What's the movie Old School where Blue gets into the into oh, the, the tub with the with like the two K-Y? wrestlers? The K-Y the K-Y jelly. Jelly. Yes, that's my boy Blue. <laughs> it killed him. <laughs> it did. Killed him. It killed him. R.I.P. It was great. <laughs> the dust in the wind. The but, dirty fuck tub. Seriously, they have a dirty fuck tub there, and it looks beautiful. It's in a little garden set out, and they were like, "It's completely secluded." Like they call it out, completely secluded, private. I was like. Oh, if they, it's they not want a, you. If it's, it's not up. in a room, how's it completely secluded? I guess there's a gate that you pull shut. So like <laughs> that doesn't keep people <laughs> away. No, like you could still open the gate. Yeah. In fact, if I hear splashing, I'm opening the You're gate. You're opening the gate. <laughs> yeah. Might as well. I want to see who's in there, you yeah. know, doing their thing. Maybe they'll tap me in. Come on in, come. Yeah. Deuce, deuce, come <laughs> quick. I, when you when you were talking to the Alice tub, I was thinking they had like a room that was like three Three walled, you know, but like looked out at an amazing view, you know, like set on an edge of a hill or something. So like, yeah, this is like really walk around you. There's three walls. And then the fourth wall is a rolling barn door gate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think. Okay. So it, so you can kind of just close so it, it is. So, I mean, they're not going to walk in from the, from the front side. No, no, no. It's like its own garden. Right. That they've set in the yard. But like people are on the other side of that wall. Yeah. <laughs> hearing the splashing. Time in people, yeah, and go. <laughs> Thirty seconds. Horrible showing. Horrible showing. Get get a uh, get like a scorecard when they walk back out through the gate. Oh yeah. <laughs> if I had a bad showing, I would sit there on the side of the tub and just splash water for fifteen yeah. minutes, you know, and then I'd walk out of there like, woo, got it, I'm exhausted, <laughs> exhausted. She comes out bone dry. Like, like, what were you doing? I was splashing in the tub. Okay, you got me. <laughs> I'd like to rent the tub for one. Y'all, y'all going for two nights? Yeah. Where is it? Down the northern neck. So it nice. should be nice. Yeah. Like I'm go down there without my boat. What town? Know. It's right wherever the tides is. You know where the tide the tides is the expensive ass place. Oh, uh, Irvington. Yeah, that's the spot. So headed that way. Excited, to, excited to see it. But we're staying at the Fuck Hut. The Fuck Hut. <laughs> nice. There's the tides, which is like a five star, beautiful place, and then just. Two blocks away is the fuck hut. And we're going to be staying at the fuck hut. <laughs> we stayed at a great place down there called Mad Calf, the Mad Cow Cottage. It was really freaking nice. It, it had a fucked up. It had a, like a. But it was a private place. It was definitely private. Yeah, it, think, it was four walls, but it was definitely set. And I think I'm walking into a, a swinger situation. Well, I mean, that couldn't be so bad. You got your loofahs. You know what I want? <laughs> yeah, which is exactly what I do want to talk about, but we have to get back. Go ahead, Troy. Go ahead. You know what, you know what to me is luxurious and I, my house isn't big enough? My master, my on suite bath isn't nearly big enough. But to me, like the ultimate lap of luxury is like having a shower big enough to where you don't need like a curtain or a door. You just kind of walk in and you make the turn and yeah. there's plenty of fucking like you can have dual heads and like you don't have to wor- worry about water splashing out and stuff. You don't have to even fuck with any of that. Right. It is. And the like a big rain one that comes yeah. from the center. Oh. I've stayed in some hotels that have that and like yeah. you walk in and it's like you have to turn the corner. It's yep. all tiled and nice. Yep, but you yep. turn the corner and everything over there is shower. Yeah. But there's four feet of unused tile. No water ever gets yep. to. And I was like, I'm like that. Mm-hmm. We are living. Yeah. We have we have made it. Because we have like a custom shower that's like 
tiled and has a bench and all that cool shit in it. But it's like the size of a bathtub. So it holds two people, but it's not like roomy. But not you're still, roomy. Yeah. You're still like fucking with the curtain. Like, the you know, yeah. you get that weird draft where the curtain's blowing in or, you know, like. And even like glass doors to me, they're like just a pain in the ass to clean and gross and get all like grimy down in them and everything. Like it never I, looks as good as the day you put it in. Exactly. You know, <laughs> like, damn, it's all downhill from there. Well, I'm sorry to hear about your, uh, your it fucking sucks, but you know what? It is what it is. And we'll just record again on Friday or Saturday. That's right. That's right. You're a podcast. And you'll have that story to start it off with. That is right. We'll be like, listen up, everybody. Funny story. Funny story. So I wonder if uh, if our boy Chad Dukes ever had that problem. Troy, you had the... uh, the, So anyone who doesn't know, Chad Dukes is a guy who... You turn me. You turn me on to. Yeah, I was. I mean, I'm a big fan of Chad Dukes. He used to be on 1067 up in uh, the fan up in Northern Virginia. Yeah. And he had the afternoon drive. But before that... He was on, he was doing like talk radio and he, he was just, he's an old radio soul, but, yes. but stuck in the new radio world. He's cut, cut from the cloth of like the Stearns and the Opie and Anthony's. And then he had a podcast that I loved, Big O and Dukes, which ultimately fell apart when he got canned. Yeah. Because they said that he was making some off, off color comments, which is kind of fucked out because that dude. Yes, he makes off-color comments yeah. in the name of comedy. Yes, right. But he surrounds about himself all pe- about all types everybody. of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he surrounds himself with every type of person. Well, mostly the people he picks on are the the, the quote unquote privileged, like his friends. They're all like fat white loser dudes yeah gamer dudes but he's like, done podcasts with 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 black guys with gay guys with like he's he's done it all like you he's not chinos he's not any of those things they say no, no, he no. is but he also understands when a good joke presents itself and he goes after it and that ultimately got him canceled yeah. not for anything he said on the air but for something he said on a podcast years prior that mm-hmm. somebody dug up and and dragged right. to the forefront and it was right about the time he was negotiating his contract and they were like, you know what? <laughs> you don't get it to. How about how about okay. fuck you? He was so good on the radio, and of course I didn't listen, but I know the history. Like he was so good on the radio, he went through a bunch of uh, station flips where they like, oh, and they keep him. We're not rock anymore. We're sports talk. We're not sports talk anymore. We're you know this or we're gonna move you from morning to midday to afternoon. He could do to it all. He could do it all. He could do it all. And he does podcasts that are about movies and about wrestling and then about eating, just hanging out, yeah, like gaming. He, yeah, he does gaming shit. Like he he can do anything and make it sound hilarious. So so I've always been a fan because I think he's really talented. Yeah, back when and, we started podcasting, you know, and we kind of got in early to the podcast game. Like it weren't it was there were not nearly as many. No, and I was like, I had a few that I liked, and I was like, Brendan, you know, what podcast are you listen? He's like, oh, this Big O and Dukes, you know. Not a lot of people, you know, are into it, but, you know, he's a DC guy and, you know, so I gave him a chance and I just fell in love with it. And then, of course, like Brendan was saying, he he doesn't uh, he doesn't run Big O and Dukes in the thing anymore. But he so once that fell apart, he started his own model where he's it's called the Chad Dukes show and it's pay to play. It's like 15 bucks a month or something. But he does. Yeah. He does content almost daily. I mean, it's his job. So it's a patron. So you got to you got to pay to even it's listen like to his content. It, it's behind a paywall. Yeah, it's, it's, a, oh, it's, wow. a, it's a subscription based model. Oh, subscription. Okay. And uh, he's, I guess, he's doing well. You know, we don't. I don't see his numbers, but I mean, he's, he's doing well enough to keep his house in the yeah, Outer Banks, keep his house in in Oakton. I mean, yeah. he's doing all right. Not easy places to live, right? For a, for a person who doesn't have money. So just over five years ago, five years in a week. Um, he started he he does all these other side bit projects too like brendan was saying he does multiple podcasts well he opened a dry goods store in fairfax and uh downtown fairfax commonwealth dry goods commonwealth plug. dry goods yeah so it, it's the size of this it's the size of the pout house and he just sells you know albums and artwork and candles and nuts nuts and, <laughs> and, and weird like sodas you don't see it you know every day it's like Just, the curated crap that he's like this that, is yeah, good this is good right <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. my favorite stuff <laughs> right yeah so, so i know where to get it now i don't have to order it online yeah. and you have a place to get it assuming you like all my stuff yeah so i i tried to I, i'm never in 
downtown Fairfax. It's just I never go to Northern Virginia, and I definitely don't go to downtown Fairfax. But a couple of years ago, I was up there for work, and I was like, I'm going to swing by. It was on Wednesday. And I'm, like, super excited. And I'm like, I know his wife runs it, and, you know, he's doing his thing during the day, and his wife's running the shop. And I'm like, this is going to be awesome. So I walk up. And and for some odd reason, it was randomly closed on a Wednesday. Wednesday, I sent Brendan. I remember a picture. that you were so devastated, <laughs> I was so broken hearted. So then, I mean, that was three, four years ago. So then, like two years ago, I was up there again for work, and I was like, "All right, I'm gonna hit it." Went in there; it was cool. She was working. I was like, "I'm a big fan of your husband's show." She's like, "That's cool." She gave me a sticker too, whatever. Well, cut to like two weeks ago, we we're up I'm up there on the weekend. They're open on the weekend, and I know he usually works on Saturdays. So we, I was up there watching my son dive, and we were coming back, and it was during business hours. I was like, I'm going to run through there. I'm going to grab some stuff. Hopefully, Chad's working. So as sure as hell, I was like, I had my mother-in-law and my oldest son with me. So I'm like, we're going to stop by this dry goods store. Oh, God, you took all that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I was like, we're going to stop at this dry goods store. Of course, they're like, what's a dry goods store with? Like, like, you can pick out some candy. Yeah. I'll yeah. get some nuts. Exactly. So we pull in. And mother-in-law, you get a candle. Yeah. <laughs> so we walk in, and, like, it's pouring down rain. We go in, and he's working behind the counter. And then, of course, it won't mean anything to the listeners, but one of his regulars on the show was there that I instantly recognized, Hot Man Ted. Which I've never been so disappointed in anything <laughs> in my life. I This is the funny thing about podcasts. You start to develop this this image yes. of, of what people are. Yeah. And... This guy, Hot Man Ted, he just strikes me. You know, they always talk about how good looking he is and how, yeah. he's, how well he's doing with the ladies kind of thing. Well, I, I guess now he's starting kind of locked down or something, I think is the Yeah, the I think case. so, yeah. But Well, there's so there's versions of that for you and me, you, me and Ray. Of course. Everyone thinks that we're something else. Yeah. And I yeah. had this vision of Hot Man Ted, and I was like, this guy, in my mind, Hot Man Ted looked like James Bond. Like he was always dressed in like a black suit, white shirt. Yeah, two buttons undone at the top, little extra, little little more, a uh, little more cleavage than he should be showing. He's a good looking man, and and, and kind of reminds me of who's the, who's the latest, uh, the latest James Bond. Oh, uh, um, the British guy. Well, that narrowed it. James Bond is British. Yeah, but not. It's an American, and usually it's been American actors. But that's um, the guy that I, Craig, Daniel Craig, Daniel, Daniel Craig. Craig. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Daniel Craig is in my mind him. Hot Man Ted is Daniel Craig. Yeah. In a black suit, white shirt, two buttons undone. That's Hot Man Ted. Can't be touched. <laughs> Fucking styling and profiling. And you send me this picture of Hot Man Ted. So I'm, I'm looking at their website. How the fuck do they make any money? I mean, they sell like jerky, candles, music, and gift cards. He's got it's, a following. Yeah, he's got a fo- I mean. So do you think it's mostly online? Or was the store? No, no. Like, I go out no. of the way. Last time I was up in Northern Virginia. Well, that downtown go, Fairfax area is really well, it's, cool. It, it like, is. It it's is pretty busy. It's got a lot of walkable shops and stuff. Speaking from a guy who's looked at real estate there to put a store, it is very expensive. Yes. That's why the store is not huge. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But like I drove 45 minutes out of my way the last time I was up there because I wanted to go to Monk's Barbecue. Yeah. <laughs> Who is one of Chad Dukes' buddies. And one and their main sponsor. So yeah. it's like I hear that stuff and like I go out of my way. I guarantee there's people who come in who you're not the anomaly. Trump. Oh, no. People go in there and eat, drop right. hundreds of dollars. Uh, you hear them talk about they do uh, live shows and like he, he'll know all the people there because they've been coming to so many shows. Yeah. And they'll, they'll fly. Literally, they'll do shows and people will fly. Big O and Dukes would have shows and people fly across the country to go to them. Absolutely. Which I wouldn't do that to see my favorite band. You know, like it's it's crazy. That's what a good following will do for you, though. Yeah. He's got a big enough following that I think. Well, I'm going to have to go. Have you been, Brendan? Uh, no, when I went, it was closed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I walk in and I got my mother-in-law and my son with me. And I'm like, I told him, you know, it's this podcast I was doing. And I was like, yeah, I was like, that's him. And he was like, cool. So I was like, hey, man, I'm a listener. You know, been listening for a long time. My buddy Brendan got me. And he's like, oh, that's great, man. He started handing me handing me stickers. We were buying some stuff. Bought like $40 worth of stuff. We were just chit-chatting. He had all these autographed guitars up. And my son's like, oh, you know, what's up with those guitars? He's like, that's a great question. He's like, 
this is Willie Nelson. This is Chris Christopherson. That's what I'm like, talking uh, about. Okay. <coughs> oh, he's a big music guy. Yeah. Okay. And he's like, hey, uh, you know, next time you're in the area, man, just like hit me up. You can come over to the studio and, and watch the podcast if you're, you know, a big fan. I was like, holy shit that's freaking awesome yeah yeah so, yeah so i was like oh man i was like me and my buddy brendan you know we've been doing a podcast a weekly podcast for seven years he's like really he's like seven years because like weekly good we got a little street yeah yeah they he's seven like, episodes is the norm yeah so then like <laughs> he caught a phone call and it was like raining and we've been there 15 minutes we bought we bought some stuff and i was like i was like all right we're heading out and he was like put the phone down he's like he he tells like whoever's he's like, hold on. It's like, you guys heading out? Like he was like I was like, Yeah, man, we're gonna go we gotta get back to Richmond. He was like, Oh, okay. Like he seemed a little disappointed that like we weren't gonna hang there and just talk with him. Like he was like the super nicest dude ever. That's they say awesome. They say don't meet your heroes, but like I was super impressed. Well, you were impressed by him, but I got the chance to see Hot Man Dad. I've never been so disappointed in my life. <laughs> that son of a bitch is a mousy looking motherfucker, man. Yeah, he's a, he's he a little that, guy. He had that big doofy uh like hat on, like one of those like like sun hat kind yeah. of things. Oh, yeah. But like but not as cool. Like it was the straw like, looking one. It was like a frog tog hat fucked a sun hat. That was and a like, Chad Duke show hat. You better watch it. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, not everything they put out has got to be gold. No, no, no. But like, just because it looks good too doesn't mean it looks good on you. You know, I can assure you it did not look good on him. He looked. I was. I was bummed. I was bummed when I saw I, it. Ruined everything in my belief of what Hot Man Ted was. He went from Daniel Craig to yeah, Danny, Danny. So, <laughs> so now you and me got to find some time in the middle of the week to get up to Fairfax to get. Go watch the chat. Go Duke watch show, the, dude. Yeah, well, I'm going to a show at the Get Tight Lounge later this month that he had actually turned me on. Did to. Did you so buy what? tickets for that? Uh, not yet, but I mean, buy me a ticket. I'll get you one. And, and you're driving the yes. Get Tight Lounge. Is oh. that the one that's like in somebody's fucking backyard? Is it that feels like it. It's it's the greatest venue. Okay, so I can't I can't wait. Maybe he'll be there. When maybe. is it? Uh, May 25th. All right. Get Tight Lounge. I'm gonna put it's that a on Thursday night. We won't be recording that Thursday. Fair warning. Unless we want to record early in pregame. And then go to Get Tight Lounge. I could do that. I'll have to check my calendar. It's on my calendar. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm going to catch that show because he turned me on to him, and then I went and listened to a bunch of the music, and I was like, you know what? This will do. Well, now I've met him. I, we're buddies. I can introduce you to him. I'd appreciate that. Yeah. I would. That would be great. Actually, so look, we're a few minutes early, but I'm going to jump to the deli now because I the whole topic I oh, want to talk about tonight. We got to be we have to be a little toasty to talk about that one. Yeah, I got a topic I want to uh-huh. talk about tonight. What's the deli's the victory in here? Yeah, it's up on top of the Miller Lights there, leaning over. It's the Victory Summer Ale, which come on, you can't screw up a come summer. Come on, right? I love a summer it's like ale. Old nail. Well, they screwed up. I don't mean, look, that triple monkey's everywhere, and it's got to be the biggest turd in it is, the game. It's just, like, you want to buy it, and you want to like it. What's their, is that their bestseller? Is that oh, their, it's like, got to be yeah, their bestseller. Oh, it's, it's in, their number one. It's it's everywhere. Everywhere. That's actually a great looking bottle, though. No, I saw it, and I was like, it does look good. I was like, cool. Victory, you get one more. Yeah. One more This try. is it. If they screw me here, then I don't know what to do with them. Victory Brewery kind of. They've disappointed me so many times. Now I'd like I'm to, going back. I want to keep the whole thing. It's like that's fine. All right. What? I'm going to keep the whole thing. I'm not going to share this with anybody. That's fine. All right. All right this is the. Did you want to? What, what? Well, I mean, I just thought maybe we were going to share. Oh. Oh, okay. This is the. No, I just need a sip. So I always take some of something. This is the Victory Summer Love Golden Ale, and it's in their seasonal favorites category. Okay, on the nose, I can tell you this. There may be a dead toe in there. Oh, How the God. fuck do they keep screwing up <laughs> everything they do? How are they? That does. You want to see it? It looks fine. Oh, it looks fine. It smells, though, like there's a corpse. It really does have a funk. It has a funk. It is a. Damn it. All right, Victory, I'm going in. Mm-mm. Okay. Okay. It's officially not the worst beer I've ever had. What's the bottle say? You mean read the bottle? The bottle. No, I'm actually wearing glasses right now. Summer is all about good vibes. This refreshing beer includes earthy. There it is. 
and lemony hop notes that create an unexpected burst of flavor for a vibrant taste combination that you will never forget. There's not one bit of lemon in this. 5-2. <clears throat> Victory. If you, if you smell it, it'll ruin it. I yeah. think this is one of those beers where you just can't inhale through your nose while you're drinking. Does earthy make you want anything? Like, does that bring good connotations? Sometimes. Like- sometimes I like a cider that has a little earthy note, like a unfiltered cider that'll have like a little... I mean, I know like some it. scotches and bourbons will have a earthy, mossy, you know, but like I never hear earthy and I'm like, God oh, have yeah, that. can't well, wait to I, put that know, in like, my mouth. A cigar. And it also depends on the time of year. I like a earthy, like a, you know, like a, uh, that kind of a forward drink in the fall. In the fall. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But you wouldn't want to put that in a summer beer. No, because the summer beer is supposed to be light. And one thing that you can't do with light is earth. To me, there smells like orange in this and not lemon. There's definitely some orange. Did it say lemon in there? Yeah. It just fakes like it's got lemon. Well, in Stu there. would tell you that oranges and lemons are totally different. So not even in the same genus. Not even in the same family. So. All right. This is the best victory beer I've ever had. I'll give them that. It's getting better as I drink it, too. I don't is, hate it. No, I don't. I, I, look, that's why I gave it the initial compliment of the best victory beer I've ever had. Yeah. The, but how high is it? I don't know. I'm one sip away from passing judgment. That's about where I am. I feel like this is a three sipper before you can pass judgment. First sip, too earthy. Second sip, okay. little citrus. Third sip's going to be the... Uh, the big dog. Yeah, this isn't bad. This is not a bad beer. Third sip was enjoyable. Yeah. Actually got to the point where all of a sudden the lemon zest was kind of popping out. The earthy's gone away. But should I have to earn it? Do you know what I mean? Like to be a deli, you shouldn't have to earn it. You don't you shouldn't have to overcome it. I don't think we have to worry about this being a deli. No. But um, it's I'll go. I'll go first. This this beer tastes very much like a beer. Ooh. It's it's a beer. It's and I, I I appreciate that because it's not overdone with a bunch of crap that doesn't even need to be in there. Um, this is a if if a two and a half is average, this is slightly above average. So I'm gonna give it a three. Yeah, I can't get higher than a three. Three and a half is flirting with deli, and it's not deli worthy. I can tell you this. If it didn't smell like that on the nose, it is a three and a half. It is a three and a half if it didn't smell. And it's fucking, it's terrible. The smell's terrible. It's Why terrible. Is it, how can something smell and taste so different? That's so know. weird to me. That smell had just been trapped in there for a while. You know, and now I can't help but smell it every time I drink mm-hmm. it. Yeah, it's it's it's, <laughs> it's like that. and it's one of those like it's a it's a weird smell. It's a weird funky smell, but but like you kind of like you said, you kind of can't help but you can't just help keep but smell it. Oh, yeah, yeah, like that's weird. And it's it's like I can't. You, you give me a nine volt battery. Yeah, you got to. As soon it. as I take it out, I go. <laughs> I know it's got full juice. <laughs> stick it on my tongue and then i and i'm like why'd i do that it now now my tongue tastes like copper and yeah. i got i got shocked but i'm like ah, that was awesome and then i put it in whatever it was supposed to go right. in. Yeah. every damn time every yeah. time and when i take a nine volt out it's the first thing i do like yeah i don't know why i do it yeah. and i can't help but smell this before i put it in my mouth too go ahead troy he just went. He oh, gave yeah, it right. All right. So go I'm going to say I'm going to say three only because look, I actually like the flavor. It's it, yeah. it is it, it's not as crisp as they say. It's a little it's a little thicker, little little bit of malt hiding in the background, but it is yeah. bright. It's got that that really light hop note with some citrus. If it didn't have any smell, it's a three and a half. And on that last sip, I would be willing to argue that I may go as high as four. But the smell brings me, it turns me off a little bit. I'm going three. Can't argue. Ray, that. you're up. Well, 
So I'm looking at the website, Summer Love on Victory's website. It has some pretty good marketing. I'll, I'll, I'll do that. It's a great looking bottle. I would buy this in a heartbeat just looking at it. Yeah. Um, but you're right. The the smell when you open it, it's like, is it really a gold nail? I don't even think it's a gold <laughs> nail. It's very Pilsner-ish. I think if you poured this to me on draft, I'd probably like it a lot. In fact, if I see this on draft, I will order it. I think it's something about being trapped in that bottle. Yeah. They said that in the late 2000s, they created a, a beer to celebrate the best of summer. Baseball, beach days, and barbecues. And that's what this is supposed to represent? It is. Okay. Sure they didn't mean gardening, weed pulling? <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm not a... Corpse, I'm kind of a snob here, but... Corpse stuff? It is a... It, it's a good full bodied beer. I do like the bite to it. Mm-hmm. It's got a it's got a nice like it tastes like a fucking beer. Yeah, that's what I said. right. So it right it's it's good. Exa- yeah. it does taste like a beer. So I'm I'm right there with you. It's a three. If it didn't stink, it'd be a three and a half. Yeah, I'm, I'm, all it's right not a point. bad tasting beer. No, it's. Not. I would put this. I'd put the cans in there and I'd drink these. Yeah. If someone has these at their house, I'll drink them. Sure. For I'm sure. not. I'm not an anti. Of this beer, I, I honestly I want to give it a three and a half. The more I drink it, but the smell bothers me. I and I, I honestly think I could go four on flavor alone. Like if I was one of those people who couldn't smell, yeah, I'd be like, there's a, a four. It's it's caramel. It's there's some vanilla in this with a little citrus. It's, it's good. It's a good beer. It's it's really good. But it's a choice, Brendan. It just shouldn't have farted on me. Yeah, it definitely stinks. It just stinks bad. <laughs> Oh, oh there nice. we go. Yep. <laughs> yeah, man, I'll tell you what, that dang old That's not the right. Right. <laughs> just go on there point and click, 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 click. It's real easy, man. That did not work. We'll just do that then. No, nope, we're good. Oh, I quit. I fucking quit. Every button, every button has been flipped around on my board. Uh, not for nothing. Are we mm. recording this episode? Just to make sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 All right, I do. I, I have something I want to talk about. All right, today. yeah, you finally got something you want to get off your chest. Yeah, so it was a few years ago. Oh man, year? that smells. It was just over a year. <laughs> just over a year ago. Beer. It was not this past April. The April before, I was driving down. I'd always heard rumors of this place called the Villages. You familiar with the Villages? The fifty-five and older place in central florida you got it it's about an hour outside of orlando and the villages has always intrigued me now this is the first time i ever got a chance to see What'd it you hear about it i heard what everyone else heard about it that it was the world's largest retirement community that it was growing by leaps and bounds yeah i think i've heard that- like it's crazy expansive and it's like super awesome and nice like everybody rides golf carts everywhere and there's just activities, but it's like when you think 55 and older, you think retirement home, but it's like for active seniors. Like This is where you go to retire when it's like, all right, I've made enough money. Yeah. And and over 80% of the population has to be over 55. That's how they keep their, yeah. their numbers there. If you're under, like if you're in, if you're, if you're under, you can only be there for up to 30 days and then you have to leave. It's like going to another country. You have to like. You could yeah. come in for a little you bit visit. and you go out. In fact, I noticed there's a bunch of Airbnbs because there's a bunch of snowbirds. Oh, snap. Oh, uh, yeah. And the snowbirds will come there in the winter, but in the dead of summer, you could actually rent like a VRBO or an Airbnb. Yeah. They have their golf carts pimped out. And they got all their shit ready to go. And like you could go in there and you could just party it up for a weekend in the villages and then head out. Now, why would you want to go to the villages? I have some fun facts about the villages. And then we can talk about the thing, the elephant in the room that everyone does talk about the villages. Uh-huh. That's probably the other thing everybody's heard. It's got to be expensive. I mean, I, do you know how big it is? Do you have any stats on it? Yeah, the villages. It, 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 Ray, can in, you look up some yep. stats on it? Because in, it is stupid. Like, I want to it, say it's like. It's big enough to be in three counties. Yeah. Like, it's. When you think of large, like, you're thinking, oh, it's a big neighbor. Like, no, I'm talking like. So it is 5.56 square miles, which is fucking big. Yeah, square miles. Yeah, square, not acres. Like. Yeah. So that's a five-mile road this way. And a five-mile road the other way. <laughs> yeah. No, because so, that would be 25 square miles. Isn't that yeah. what you just said? 25 well, square miles? Yeah, it's five square miles. So it'd be like two and a half. Or, yeah. yeah, two and a half. Two and, two and, and a half. half, yeah. Yeah. So, which but, you and I, our houses are less than two miles apart. 
So when I drove by the villages, when did you do this? This was last April, not okay. the April, the April before. We drove by, and I was with the Duke, and we kept talking. We were talking about the villages, and we finally saw it. And when you passed it, you want to talk about ticky tack houses that all look the same and just yeah, just just sprawling. Yeah, because one of the reasons you move there is like it's a condo association type place where you don't do any outdoor maintenance. Yeah, like. Your your work here is done. You're here to relax and have a good time. Yeah, the vast majority of homes are bought with cash. The median home price is four ten as of today. I looked it up today. Mm-hmm. Four ten. So when you retire, you should have, you know, from the house that you had, you're hoping to have four ten, right? Yeah. You go, boom. You're in the villages. Paid for, living the dream. So some fun facts about the villages. Literally the fastest growing metropolis in the US. Yeah, here they just keep adding New neighborhoods onto it for over the and last, over and over. For the last decade. It's a, there are 100,000 people that live in the villages. Good gracious. Like, there's a lot of cities that don't have. I think Richmond, I think Greater Richmond's like 350, 400,000. Yeah. It's, it's, so, a quarter of the size of Richmond, Chesterfield, Hanover, Henrico. But still grow. I mean, the still grow. fastest growing yeah. in the U.S. from 2010 to 2019, according to the census results, every year. It was the fastest growing metropolis in the U.S. Now, I haven't mm-hmm. seen the updated stats, but I mean. but the, And those wouldn't be baby boomers, right? Because they're mostly dying. They're starting to age out because yeah. the average age of people in the villages, the guys are 62. That's the average age. And the women are 60. <laughs> which already leads, leads me to my first point. <laughs> All right. <laughs> right? Skewing, a little, skewing younger? Yeah, the women are skewing a little younger. So when you go there, you automatically get... I'm two years older than my wife. That's and what say. guess what? 54% of the population is female. Ooh. Oh, now okay. if you start running and men die earlier. So you start running these numbers, yeah. right? 46% of the population is male. 54% is female. There's a big swing there. You like your odds. I like my odds. In fact, of that 100,000 people, 15,000 of them are single. Mm. Uh, they've got so many damn singles clubs there. Widowers clubs, divorcees clubs, you name it. Yeah. So part of what they talk about there Twice is Twice divorce clubs, thrice divorce clubs. <laughs> absolutely. And those women have money. Yeah. But word to the wise, don't marry them. Yeah. Or prenup. Yeah. We want prenup. Well, speaking of prenups, the average median uh, household income Sixty-one thousand dollars, and then um, not according to the village's real estate though, where they say it's ninety thousand because they want to make they it look do more like, they do say it's ninety. So the medium household income is sixty, according like, but the villages is ninety-three thousand. So in the area, it's thirty thousand more dollars income if you live in the villages. And these motherfuckers aren't working. They're not working. <clears throat> Nice. So you just said it was about five square five square miles, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah. How many miles of golf cart paths do you think they have in the villages? <laughs> I don't know. Well, it's a, is it a, so like, I, I don't know. I'd have to see it. Like, Home do they, prices range from $200,000 to a million bucks. They yeah, still average have, being four times. They still have to have streets, even if it's a golf cart village, because you have to have like first responders getting gaining access to yeah, it. Yeah, they have seven different fire departments. Seven different fire Seven departments. Seven different fire departments. Shut the fuck up. They've got. They've got. And They're running they, more EMS calls than fire calls. I can tell you that. That's, That's right. true. <laughs> yeah. In fact, they're running well, so many EMS calls. Nice segue. What do you think the percentage of somebody who has a sudden cardiac arrest? How many of those people <laughs> you think live? Sudden cardiac arrest in the villages. I mean, if it's sudden. Sudden. I mean, like. <gasps> Probably not a lot at that age. Of course not. Yeah. No. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah take it. You're, you're already reading an article over there. 20%. 44% of people who have sudden cardiac arrest in the villages recover just fine. Wow. In the general U.S. population, 6% of people who have sudden cardiac arrest live. That's because they're that close to EMS. What you know... We, we there's defibs on every, every corner. Everybody's got a defib. You know? everybody's, everybody's got somebody to so shot. Yeah. So that's something that a lot of people don't think about. Um, that's where you want to retire. Well, no, no, I'm talking about in general. Like 
you the three of us like living in a community so we're never too far from stuff like that but a lot of people don't think about that and then they move out to a country a rural area yeah and you could be 30 minutes from your nearest you know fire station ems when you live in a county when you live out in the middle of nowhere like that there's not hydrants everywhere so if, if you do have a fire you gotta wait for the engine to show up. That only has a few hundred gallons of water. Then you gotta wait for a tanker to show up with more water. Oh, the vast majority of homes that catch on fire there are perfectly fine. Yeah. The village is, is the place to live. Think about that. If you have a sudden heart attack, it's like flipping a coin. Yeah. And that's a sudden cardiac arrest. In the rest of the world, it's like winning the lottery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There it's just flipping a coin. Yeah. That's a pretty good those are pretty damn Those are great odds. odds. Yeah. Have you did you uh did you read one hundred tennis courts are in the village? Oh, you want to start talking sports? I can talk sports. I got so let's, many sports. All right, go ahead. Let's just, Dude, just do it. These sports fucking facts. And I, I, I have <laughs> I bet it. pickleball is growing like a weed there. Oh, pickleball is growing. Pickleball like is taking over tennis courts now. All right, when it comes to golf carts, let's not let's not gloss over that. In that little tiny area, they have over one hundred miles of golf court golf cart paths. Paths. That's awesome. So everybody drives golf. <laughs> yeah. There's more golf carts per capita in the villages than anywhere. Yeah. Anywhere. Everyone drives around and tricked out golf carts. Their Lincoln stays parked. Yeah. When it comes to sports, there's 5,200 softball games a year. There's over 100 tennis courts in the villages. Over 200 pickleball courts. So think about that. That had to chip into the tennis courts. That had to chip in. To yeah. get, oh, absolutely. To get to the pickleball courts. And they're still building every day. Yeah. They have their own polo stadium in the villages. Water? No, no horses. horses. <laughs> First and, off, a polo stadium is giant. Yeah. Yes, and every year, more people go see polo matches there than anywhere else in the country. I believe that with crowds over thirty thousand people at times. Yeah, you just roll up on your golf cart. Yeah, watching polo yeah. matches. That's phenomenal. I had no idea that this. I I knew about this place for the for the other reason, but I had no idea it was this big, dude. 711 holes of golf Whoa. within the villages. The villages, they say that someone could play 18 holes every day and never play the same course, never play the same 18 for 38 days. <laughs> so, a side if note. You divide 711 by 18, that is how many... There you go. 39, 39 so, and a half there you courses. Go. Did you read the side note to that, to that about the... It's the largest community facility in the world with currently 711 and the second largest yeah is in china and it's like 200 and change this is stupid yeah no like not only china just build shit to build shit yeah we build stuff to actually set up tea times and we're still over twice as large damn near three times as large yeah when it comes to golf in general there's ten thousand tea times a day good gracious a day 2,546,611 rounds of golf played last year. Wow. 1,832 hole in ones last year. <laughs> Over 60,000 golf carts registered in the villages alone. Wow. I wonder, I bet there's a ton of dealerships down there. And like, hell yeah, you want to get a golf cart? And plus, people are dying. And people are upgrading, yeah. and selling off golf carts. You want to go run a golf cart mafia, you carry your yeah. ass to the villages, yeah. and you start driving them bitches back because they're already tricked out. And if I remember correctly, most golf cars are made, Easy Go and Club Car both are manufact- are made in Augusta. <laughs> so Easy. that's not far. Imagine what the dealerships look like there. Oh, yeah. I mean, that must be Dude, the There's same. a dealer, <laughs> golf cart dealership by my place at the lake. And I mean, they sell fifteen thousand dollar golf cars all day long. It's crazy, and this is before even like they haven't even finished, or they're just finishing now the fourth Times Square. So there's there's three town centers. So each each of the neighborhoods sprawls off of a town center. Yeah, and then everyone kind of hangs out in the town. It's center. like the downtown. Yeah. So there's three of them. The fourth one is about to come online any day now. So then there'll be four different town centers. I'd like to just go tour that place. That's what I'm saying. That's, it's it's got to be made. There's over 100 restaurants alone in the villages proper within the walls. That's insane. 
They spend more money there. On Is it walled parts. off like that? I mean, it's it's gated. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, you can't get in. So, like, but there's a hundred restaurants in the proper. That's crazy. <laughs> area. So, like, you can ride your golf cart to that. And every single night, 365 days a year, there's music in each one of those town centers. Live music from five to nine. That is wild. Every night. You bands, love live music. Love live music. So how how can you get in? Pay the money. Be over 55. There's got to be a ton of uh, like HOAs and stuff, right? I don't know. Each one of those villages has different, like, I'm sure. Agreed, because I think one of the stats I read was like, houses start at 200 grand and go up to a million. So, so you like can, there's a million dollar set corner of Right. It. I'm sure there's a corner. Yeah, there's like some neighborhoods that only have like a hundred homes, uh-huh. and that's like the dope shit. And then there's one that have like fifteen hundred homes, and like screw that noise. Oh, you like live that's, in, the, that's the poor. You oh, live you in, live down there. You live down yeah. in two palms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Right. Gross. Gross. Speaking of, I gross. didn't know you were homeless. Yeah, I mean, we, we get, get there. We get there. there. <laughs> Let's see what other awesome facts I had written down that I really dig. 5.8 million golf balls are lost at the villages each year. 5.8. Yeah. Speaking of that, how many golf balls did you lose this weekend? So literally the very first hole that we played, like the starter, you know, the starter goes, you're not going to have to worry about losing any balls here. We're pretty wide open and there's no water until the 18th (laughs) hole. And I'm like, all right, great news. I got this. Yeah. I lost three balls on the first hole. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I was not playing well. Oh, man. And you got to think, I only swung seven or eight times. Yeah. <laughs> I lost three <laughs> balls before I was able to put one in the hole. I was like, God, that's really. How do you enjoy golf? I don't. That See, that's how I play golf, and it, I, it brings me no joy. Well, I'm just, like, I'm working towards something, and that something is the villages. Right. When I'm going right. to play golf. Just go back to the villages. All the damn Just time. go do all the other cool shit. And they have tons of stuff. Yeah. They do. You think Like, all, if you look at all the sports stuff they do, the I think all the town centers are the same, or you think they're different? They got to be they're different. They're all a little different. Yeah. They're all a little, they all got their own. And so, like, you could be like, no, I'm going to drive over there. Because if you're going less than five miles. Yeah. Right? Everything's got to be within that little perimeter so like you can go to this town center this town center and that doesn't include music that's being played in bars and restaurants yeah that's just music 365 days a year i can cruise and check out a band and that's got to be mecca for like washed up bands right yeah you know like they can they can have a residency you some great live music for like there's gotta be 60 year old dudes who can like shred Absolutely. But these are like young people. They're bringing yeah. in. The oh, bar- I'm sure they're bringing in all the good. The bartenders people. are young. You yeah. know, the waiters oh, and waitresses yeah. are young. Like, no, there's there's vibrant life. It's just not, you know, it's just not the people who are the patrons. Well, 60. Well, you know, I would say they're pretty vibrant. 55. Well, they got are. some energy. 55 no, used to be old and it's not anymore. That's like, correct. So that's so Ray's, Ray's alluding to the. The obvious elephant in the room. <laughs> when it comes to the villages, there's always been these rumors. I think this is what everyone knows about the village. It is a it is a fuck show. Yeah. I mean, you are like like the only way I'm moving to the villages is if my wife like dies before me mm-hmm. and I'm so devastated that I can't get over it. Just don't go to the two palms. You gotta yeah. you gotta you gotta <laughs> no, spend a little more. I'm not going to the fucking two palms. <laughs> Come on. It's fucking gross. <laughs> Riding around in my, my degenerate <laughs> golf cart. No, I don't. I don't want anything to do with it. But the first time I ever heard of the village is someone had mentioned to me. This is like right after Viagra came out, Little Blue Pill, and they they were saying that like guys wear blue pants, and those blue pants meant that they were carrying. They were carrying the magic blue pill. Really? So like they had the, they had the big stiff dick, and so like that was the thing. Everyone walked around in the blue pants. That was like. Looking to looking to do work. And then I heard the rumors that like if somebody intentionally wears their tag out of their shirt, that means one thing or. And then I heard the rumor later in life that like if you're wearing a specific color of loafer, that that loafer indicated the various things that you were you were willing to do. But now the big rumor and this one has not been unfounded and I see enough pictures of it that I have to wonder what is going on here is that people hang loofahs either out of their car window 
where they put it on their golf cart and the color of the loofah helps you determine like one color is like I'm on the prowl. Another color is like, hey, we're a couple, but we swing. We're, wow. we're down to swap. Another color is like, I get fucking weird. And then there's other colors that are like, I am down for literally fucking anything. And then there's a really cool dude that just has all of them hanging off the back of his golf cart. <laughs> Damn right. But this has become a rumor. And like the more and more you look it up, you see pictures. There's pictures of it? Of loofahs hanging off golf carts, loofahs hanging out of car windows, like parked all over, going to the stores, doing their thing. Like this community still fucks. And so if you're in your 60s and the ratios are good for us guys. Yeah. This is a good place to be. Like this is how you retire. Everyone's in your age group. It's basically college. Are you expecting to still have a sex a high sex drive in your 60s? With yes. all the testosterone yes, replacement? Absolutely. Dude, I literally have held off on testosterone replacement therapy because I'm like, no 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 no, not yet. I still want my body to produce as much as possible. The day I retire, there's going to be needles in my ass. I'm going to be testosterone out. I'll be like a 20 year old prowling the fucking, you know, that, that's when you save it for, you know, like why would, if you do testosterone replacement therapy now. Yeah. We've talked about it, your body starts. St- yeah. Stops you, making you stop, it. stop making it. it. Right. So now you're, now you got to wait. Depending on it forever. I'm going to wait till I'm at zero. Then I'll be like, I'm going to hit the gym now. Yeah. Like that's when I'll get yoked. Like that's why you, that's when you do it. That's but you, you got to think if you're single and living in the villages, why would you not be just doping yourself up on testosterone, <laughs> running around with a raging hard dick and giant packs? I would like to go over the colors. Oh, do you have? Do you have? The, I uh, have the loofah colors. Oh, I wish a motherfucker would. White, so novice and beginners. Okay, so this sh- is basic. Basic, right? So if you show a purple loofah on your golf cart or car, wherever, uh, purple is voyeur. Or people who like to just watch. Shut the fuck up. I'm a cock. So you just want to watch. <laughs> if you're a purple, you just want to watch. So purple is my old ass walks Doesn't in Doesn't make you a cuck. Like, if you just want to watch another couple, go after it. Yeah, it's true. Unless it's my wife. Yeah. Yeah. But hold on. So at purple, I literally just want to watch. You just want to watch. Well, you it's like think, live porn. Well, you got to think there's couples out there that, like, probably get off on that. Well, well yeah. like We they, should probably talk about, like, pink. Hold on, hold on. Okay. I, I, I want to get an Airbnb <laughs> and a purple loofah and just drive around and watch old people fuck. Yeah. That sounds like a great weekend. Yeah, but come on. Listen, I, s- I went to a nude beach one time and I thought it was going to be the best thing ever. No, no. no. I understand this is it disappointing. Is not. No, no, no. It is not. I'm going into this Were knowing you this is gross. Was I nude? Yeah. Yeah. Was it weird? A little bit. My dong yeah, has never so. seen sun. I mean, you've never. My dong's never seen sun. Come on. I don't know. I'd have to like put fifty on every ten minutes. <laughs> you got to think like you're going in it. First you're off, knowing sa- that it's sand gonna, isn't good for your nether regions anyway. at all. It is not. <laughs> However, it's okay. Sun is okay on that. You what? What kind of bullshit? Your logic dong can is take it? a beating. <laughs> your dong can take a beating, but not from the sun. The most powerful thing in our solar system. It's not like you're like holding it up to it. Yeah. You kind of are. It's been hiding in the shadows its whole life, and I let it out. You don't think it's going to have to adjust? Let's go back to Ray being at the new beach. So, All right. You were there. Were you solo? Solo. Not, no girlfriend, wife, nothing. Nothing. So you knew no one. So that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Was, um... Obviously, it's mostly older. Older. Older and not... Not in shape people? Not in shape. Everybody yeah. thinking that they're the bee's knees, you see, know, if see you will. any good looking... Speaking of knees, titties or dicks um, or balls? I mean, everybody had them swinging. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see any attractive people? Uh, they, they probably were attractive at one time, but they were yes. definitely rode hard and put up wet. Yeah. Did you hang out long? Uh, no. Yeah. No, no, no. 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 You could definitely tell that there were men that were definitely working the, you know, working yeah. the sites and they were aroused. And, and at this point I was like, I'd oh, seen there's literally so, like hard dicks walking around. Yeah, I was like, okay, this is, I don't know. What How is, much know. Viagra would I have to take to be walking around a nude beach with a boner? But it, right. Like, but uh, these people live for this. Yeah. yeah but they're pervs. They're, 
A lot of people are pervs. Yeah. Right, so they're purple loofah types. They're purple loofahs. They're purple loofah types. Like, I went to a sex show in Amsterdam. It was the grossest thing I ever saw in my life. Unbelievable. Like, there was, like, this bed, and it just sat there. And then, like, this woman walked out, strung out, and she's like, just walks out naked and lays down. And then this dude walks out naked, except for the Timberlands, old school Timberlands. Yeah, of notice. course. And he comes walking out. shit got real. And he's just like emaciated. Just like he's been just doing heroin forever. And the one thing that still works is this dick. He just walks out hard. And he walks over and he just starts banging her. I've never seen two people so uninterested in fucking each other. They look tired, I bet. Oh, they looked horrible. Looked like they wanted to be anywhere else. Anywhere but there. And she's laying, that, laying there with that like that like look just staring off into space. And he's just like banging. What'd and you was, pay for it? Like... 25 euros or something to get in i don't know it was probably like 10 bucks and you got a free drink yeah and so like we we're just sipping and on. so they probably got half they probably got half it was disgusting yeah and it was disgusting i mean we just sat there and we watched it we were like what the fuck and then every once in a while she would change positions and then he would lazily bang her and i was like ew and we finished our drinks and we we're like we're never doing that again <laughs> like of all the things in Amsterdam, dramatic like that was the grossest thing and that's what i could kind of Envision if I had a purple loofah, but if I know that, see, I went in thinking, yeah, this is going to be amazing. Thought it was going to be a porno. Well, I, I, I would bet that there are some very attractive people in the villages with that many. Like, if you've got a hundred thousand plus people in the oh, villages, yeah, the odds, the they, odds of not having anyone attractive. Yeah, like when you're going to the the nude beach that's in Windsor, Virginia. Ew, fuck that, Ew. right? Okay, you, you, yeah. You went to the wrong nude beach. I mean, that was the only one I knew of at when the time. When you said nude yeah. beach, I immediately thought you were in France. Or, or hedonism yeah, in yeah. Jamaica or whatever, right? Yeah, but you went to Windsor, Virginia? That's the only nude beach I knew at the time. Okay. Fail. Horrible move. It's all right. It's all right. But I don't need to do it again. Hey, buddy, tried it. I wouldn't have tried it. No, I respect that. You're right. You're right. But I might drop a purple if I rent an Airbnb. I drop. You gotta a purple drop a purple. Kind of take a look and go over and don't hang out in two palms. And go down to like. Oh, you gotta go down to the. Oh, you gotta go to the good stuff. You go to the good stuff. No, no, I'm I'm driving through the million dollar neighborhood where the fake titties are and the, yeah. you know, the facelifts have already happened, and I'm like, we're gonna see this. There's still gonna be spots. I mean, you can't get rid of liver spots, but I mean, hey, game on. So along with the purple, you could also like carry a pink if you wanted. Why would I carry a pink? If you wanted a soft swap, like people who like to do it with other people in the room. Oh, a soft swap. So I get to still bang my wife. Yep. So no jealousy. But when I turn my head to the right, I'm watching. You're watching someone else. Oh, that's what that's called. Soft swap. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, soft people swap. who these like all, to do it with other people in the room. So, it's, all... so you're getting to you're getting to have like a you can see. You can do some voyeur things. Does a soft swap, though, could that enter me into a weird purple showing up in my room? It, yeah. I mean, obviously, you have to be willing to probably want the purple. Look, these are all gateway drugs to you, like, having 18 dudes over to your place. You yeah. Know, like, you're th- sitting in the corner now with a purple loofah yeah. while your wife gets banged. Yeah. Yeah. So the next four categories deal with how well you play with others. Shut the front. Well, I would assume if you do any of the previous four, you play well with so you started so the with blue. Novice. You started with novice. You started with novice. So then we went from novice, like, I'm not sure what to do. So somebody will take you on. But that means you want to get in on something. Right. Purple is I just looking for watching. Pink is like, I'm going to do my partner while everybody watches. And then if you're in blue, you have a blue one. That's the lowest level of full swap. Those who can play well with others. So this is actually horrible for me because I'm colorblind. <laughs> I could you could get up. yourself in a bad spot. Yeah, like I could be just just hanging out. You could looking. grab a titty and be like, and then get punched in the face. Yeah, like I'm not allowed to do that. And these dudes yeah. are all roided up on testosterone, <laughs> right? Or you could just all old, more reason with I that gotta, old man strength. Old man strength, old man strength and, and young man <laughs> testosterone levels. Yeah. Right. So carry carry the yellow loofah with you because that is full swap. It's a it's a mid level. Why why do I got to carry full swap? Well, listen, it's a, <laughs> I don't want to do full. It's swap. a mid level swap for those who want to have fun but are still kind of nervous. So you carry the yellow so you can kind of dabble in pulls everything. Think about a rope a dope, like literally like. 
I'm kind of I got nervous. A, I got a yellow hanging Just on my tip, cart, <laughs> and you show up, and you but you're single. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. Like, this is so. Like I couldn't, I couldn't do this. My my jealousy would run run rampant. Yeah, I've never I, understood that. I show up with the, with a yellow, thinking, all right, everything's gonna be fine, and then all of a sudden, this dude's like, ha ha, gotcha, and he pulls out some other color and is in her ass. And now I'm crying. Yeah. Well, that's teal. Teal's anal. Well, teal. <laughs> yes, teal always is, has been. Teal is for been? for bisexuals. For those who want to I can't increase the their between. dating chances. Teal, blue, and green are all no, no. living in the same. I literally could be driving around thinking, <laughs> I just want to watch with my purple. And you got a teal one? And I and see another purple that turns out to be teal, and next thing I know, I'm taking it. Yeah, yep. you're, it's a buy. <sighs> but you as can, long as I'm taking it while watching. And then you get a loofah you can scrub the shame off with afterwards. <laughs> it better be a giant fucking loofah. And the, and the best description of them all is the black Okay. Luka. Oh, here we go. This one seems obvious. Yeah, that is a full swap. It's those who say, "What the fuck?" Well, let's all go down. So this is orgies. It is like. So if I come up to a house and it's just a bunch of black loofahs outside, you know it. It's happening. Then I'm okay. just gonna knock on the door with my purple. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, can I that come is, in? That is it. That's so this it. summer road trip, we're gonna the stay villages. in an Airbnb. We're gonna rent a golf car. We're gonna show up with. 500 to 1,000 multicolored uh, loofahs, and we'll just cruise up and down the street selling these loofahs for 10 bucks a pop. Snap. Get rich. Mm -hmm. And then when I find the full swap people, I'm going to drop my purple at the door and see drop if I can come purple, in. Uh, purple and black, baby. Purple and black. <laughs> Buy black. Get, get this free purple right here with you. <sighs> you want a young purple to check you out, right? Yeah. yeah. You don't mind a young purple stroking it slowly in the corner, do you? <laughs> oh, man. I can work your iPhone for you. <laughs> <laughs> you imagine uh, that? I'll show you where the camera app is. Dude, I got to get that. We're, let's go down there and open a business called Purple IT. Purple there you go. IT. That's the fuck one. Yes. We show up. They fuck. We fix their computer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Purple IT. That would be brilliant. We get you all set up. Oh. So yeah, that's right, a right. I saw you look at that. You said like that should be the name. That's it. That's the, the name. Purple IT. Yeah. I mean, that is the money maker, you know? We show up, we fix your iPhone, Fuck. we can get you hooked up to the Wi-Fi. Yeah. But you just got to do us one favor. <laughs> one one favor. You just got to bang. Right. Yeah, right. 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 Show us where the black is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah special discount. Yeah. Black mm. loofahs. Like, if I show up to an orgy, 10% off all IT yep. work. I just sit in the corner. 10% off. Show, show, hey, show your black loofah, get 10% off. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> this is brilliant. We're going to set this bitch up. We're only going to work in the summer months because all those places are rented in and the winter. And then we can podcast about all the stories. But I, but oh, I, you should have seen Harrietta's boobs. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a problem. Yeah. Okay. We all do. We're talking about the villages. It is, it is the sexually transmitted disease capital of the world. Abs is that a fact? That's it is as it should be. You damn right it is. Because honestly, if I'm going out, yes, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, like then all of a sudden I can just join the club with whatever disease I have. That's what that's the loofah they need to have. Mm -hmm. for, oh yeah, this is my uh, chlamydia loofah. This right? is my. <laughs> Why not? That actually, that actually makes yeah. perfect sense. You know, like incurable over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Curable here. Just yeah. waiting on the penicillin. This shipment. is a penicillin <laughs> dose and. This one, you're going to live out the rest of your years. But hey, it could be five to ten. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's hilarious. Man, hey, maybe you want to go sooner. I can, I can arrange <laughs> for that. <laughs> the, uh, the, the joke in the villages is we're more worried about alligators than crabs. Wow. Been there. So now, so now that we've all, and I think we all have heard about the SCDs that run rampant down there, which I've kind of heard that kind of associated with a lot of uh, assisted living and like. In general, yeah, it, it kinda, runs rampant yeah. through those retirement homes. Cause so the question is, if you meet someone and we, we're not running in the circle yet, but when you win and if you meet someone and they go, oh yeah, we have a, we, we're snowbirds. We, we have a spot in the villages, you know, like. You automatically go there, right? 
Yeah, you assume. Right. You would that, assume that it, with these stats, you would assume everyone down there is into something. There's but a that lot can't of, be true. No, it can't be. It can't be. But there's just a higher percentage of people who are willing to experiment. Keep in mind, a lot of these people came up in the 60s and 70s. Yes. So it's probably... Free love is... Uh, yeah, it's more open there yeah. currently. Our generation will probably be pretty puritanical Yeah. compared to what, what they currently Well, are. and you think about it, like, a lot of those people are, you know, they were the first generation, like you said, grew up in the 60s and 70s. Divorce was new. They've been married multiple times. Like, long-term relationships are not their thing. No, by the time the 80s came around, they came off the coke or, or yeah. just got on the coke, and all of a sudden all the marriages fell apart, and then it all went to shit. The um, there's a different a world. They had office jobs where like cheating was a thing. Was it was, was new, normal? Was just nor- like normal. Yeah, the secretary was like yeah. you were like interviewing. Like, would you blow all of us? Yeah. Okay, you're hired. I mean, my grandfather had another family across town here in Richmond. Are you serious? Yeah. Man, like because you think about it, you had Jesus. just think how simple it was. No social media, right? You're, you're the the woman, the wife stayed, stayed, at, stayed home. at home with the kids. You went away to your job across town. You had one car, probably. The wife didn't drive. She was literally stuck at home all day. Her best option was the milkman. Yeah, yeah, it had to be so. Uh, the neighbor had to be a dope. The neighbor right. probably, it was probably a, lot. a great job. Oh, the milkman was the job. Well, mm-hmm. it wasn't. That's the whole milkman joke isn't. Because it didn't happen. No, it it's happened, like, it's, it's it happened like all the time. I'm sure it's like, trust me, he delivered. Yeah. yeah, He delivered. So I'm reading an article. So the villages, there's a doctor in the villages has been there for the, like the last two decades. It's 55 and older, right? Yeah. yeah. He said, in reality, I don't see much STDs. He goes, most of them are looking for testosterone therapy to improve their sex life. See? Boom. This is why I'm saving, I'm saving the card. And he said everybody's tested for sexually transmitted diseases on a regular basis. So it's like Amsterdam whores. Yep. I want my sex drive in my 60s and 70s to die down. You just want to, like, fish. Yeah, I want to chill and relax. I don't... Troy. I don't want to continue to have the sex drive I have now that I have then that I have now. I get it, because it's, it's an albatross around your neck. You yes. Keep, yeah, no, I get it. Yes. But at the same time, if you were single and in the villages, you don't think you want to ramp that thing back up? I mean, well, we're putting I you guess. in a hypothetical. You're right, Hypo- if you're single. Like, wouldn't you want to do that? But I'm all I'm all for, like, making sure the, the woman is taken care of. I know that as women age, their sex drive increases. No. Yeah, that's the... F- that's, that's the, the lie I keep being told, too. That's the biggest fucking lie. Women in their 30s are crazy. Oh, wait till the 40s. Oh, oh yeah. God, they stay wet 17 hours a day. <laughs> that's bullshit. Um, I, I, just, I just want... <laughs> you're look, in a different world, yeah. man. You, you, not I'm anymore, not, you're not. New well, relationships, you can't... You new relationships are different. Hormones are up. There's a difference between oxytocin... I agree. And I, those, I, I, absolutely. Absolutely. New relationships are exciting and fun and you fuck like crazy. And then that shit wears off after three months and then you just leave. (laughs) Right. (laughs) And that's why it feels like they're all raging and crazy. But that crazy woman for three months, if you guys decide you're in love, it turns into any other relationship, all relationships in your twenties, your thirties, your forties, your fifties, your sixties, your seventies, they start hot and then they become love at a different level. Do you see a lot of sixty-five-year-old women you want to sleep with? No. So, what are you expecting? You're, I mean, you're not going to be rolling into some twenty and thirty-year-old girls right, down but, there. But well, in the villages, you're old, right? You're I old. Know, Everybody I'm, is the same. And it's look, just I like college. I like my age group. I've always dated in my age group. I've never been like, oh, ten years. You know, like to me, it's weird because, like, what the hell would I even talk to this person right. about? But I can't imagine. I'm hoping that my sex drive is died down some and hope i mean hopefully i'm still married and she's still around and i'm still attracted to her but like i just can't imagine like running into all these 70 year old women that i'm gonna be sexually attracted to i'm i'm hoping because i do want to just chill i just want i've worked my whole life i've raised kids like i want to <laughs> but play you can golf play golf every day you can just you can play, play golf, golf. Yeah, it's, ah. there's a lot of golf to be played. Seven, 711 <laughs> holes. You just need three more? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh. It's the old 714. <laughs> yeah. 
I'm just, I, I don't know. It sounds like an amazing place, but if all of the crazy sexual energy is real, it is kind of an intimidating place to go to retire too. Yeah. Imagine like you just want to, or yeah, imagine if you're not, if you are happily still married and you're down there. That's what I'm saying. Like, you're is just, it, your wife well, just got old well, wiener coming right. at her all over the place. Day. You it, guys were married for a really long time and, and so, and still are. And I was too. My first sexual experience after I was married was insane. Like I was like, I was like a, like a 16 year old kid doing yeah. it again when I was in my 40s. I'm sure. And I was like, holy crap, this is nice i like this <laughs> yes and that's that's <laughs> right? the excitement of new of strange it's the strange yeah right yes. that's 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 the whole and, thing and i think that's why people have affairs i think that's why people continue yes. to have affairs and do all those things and it is all about what kind of work you put into your relationship to continue to have those kind of, of course yeah you know experiences <laughs> but if you, you will it's it's virtually impossible for 50 years to keep recreating that level of excitement and newness. It just is. Yeah. I, I, so hate, you to, think, I hate to think that. Do you but think, you know it. You've been through it. I've been through you, it. You yeah. had a 18 marriage. 18 years, 19 you watched, years. You watched marriage go through its full cycle where it was exciting. It was awesome. Absolutely. Then it became it was routine. A chore. And, yeah. then it, and, then it, and then it started to fall off. And then the divorce occurred. And then you went back out in the world and you thought, holy <laughs> shit. This world is full of people who fuck. Absolutely. And then you got back into a relationship. And I know right now you say it's still amazing and I'm, I'm, I'm happy for you. Yeah. But you do understand that it will calm down. It, it, right. Absolutely. It and, will. So the question is, do you think these people, like, let's say you're a couple and you're in the village and you're throwing up all the, you, you have all the spun, the, all the loopers, you collect them all. You're just, do, did you go down there as that couple or did you get into it? To that's spice, the philosophical. Spice it up. No, that's, that's a great the question. Philosophical, yeah. like thing that I can't understand. Like, because you hey, could have. I have, I have lived, fifty years of trust with this lady. I can. We could try something different. But could I? I that, then that's what I don't understand, right? So say I go thirty years, my wife, and we're perfectly content, and we move to the villages, and then we we see all this. It's like in you're like in college again. Yeah. You see it. Could you? develop into that or like but listen I, I, i'm I think, a jealous type like, i couldn't I, do I, it i, I, I couldn't do it i couldn't I watch that, my wife with someone else i think there are people out there that we don't know neighbors friends colleagues whatever that are experiencing some of these things currently right now for sure right that they haven't told us about yeah no right, i have, they I don't have want a very to. close friend who did right tell me about it and, right and so they're having threesomes was, they're having no no it was his, his wife was like hey i either want a divorce or I'm interested in other things outside of the relationship, but I don't want to leave you. Like we have kids and I love sure. you. And he, so he, he had to come down to, do I want to be with you or should I grant this wish? And he granted the wish. Yeah. I mean, just, right. Like, still together? It, like a hall pass. Yes. And so, it, like, so it started with the hall pass. Yeah. She came back and he was like, well, like they talked about it. Like, was it everything you wanted? And she was like, no, it was, it was exciting and it was fun. And like, it was I'm good. great. And, and then, but then she was like banging him. Like she got the excitement back. She got the excitement back. God. And so then he was I, like, I can't, I literally can't understand. But then that. she kept like, doing it because she had the she had dopamine. The yeah. Right. Oh yeah. So then he was like, all right, well then I'm going to try it. But then, that's easier said. But, his guilt, but I bet dude. his guilt, his so guilt, it, right? It fucked the guilt fucked him up. Yeah. And, it's not as easy for the dude. It was harder for him yeah. than it was for her. Yeah, we we're and so it became it became a little lopsided. Oh, but to this day, and then there's resentment. But now they found they have found this strange happy medium where if he meets somebody and he's interested, he can do it, and she can do the same. And now they're no longer like seeking it. It's just if they find it, and somehow it's working for them. I couldn't do it. I know I couldn't do it. Yeah, but. Yeah. But it seems to be working for them, so I'm like, well, you know, God willing, you know, I hope, Good I, hope them, I hope I, it works I, out. I just, I know, my, I know for a fact I couldn't do it. I, I, I know I couldn't either. But what if you were old and dying, and you went to the villages? Like, yeah. Is it different at that stage of life? Yeah, I mean, and I think Troy, you bring up a great point. Do they go down there seeking that? I think one of them. I see now you see we're putting the white elephant. We're putting the elephant in the room. Oh yeah, we believe that the villages is. 
swarming with all these swingers. What if it's just that you can't have that many people in a together community without yeah. becoming without close knit. some yeah. people that do that and other people that don't, or like, they're just more open about it than this neighborhood that we're standing in right now. You could we could have all that going on, but there's no loofah, so you don't know, right? So your neighbors maybe could be just, having a sex party every three weeks. That's true, and maybe, over there they're just obvious. Yeah, maybe in the yeah. villages they're just like we're old, we've lived a full life, we don't we're not hiding this stuff anymore. But do you think eighty percent of the population sits around and talks shit about them? Like, I can't believe all these crazy motherfuckers that are doing this. And that's why the doc says, oh, there's not a ton of STDs because it's a small percentage of the population. But if you have 100,000 people and 10% of them are into it, that's 10,000 people fucking. Right. Yeah. Even if it's 1,000, even if it's 1%, that's only 1,000 people. Yeah. I think it's probably something like one out of every 10 couple of swings. That, that would be my guess. I, do I doubt it's this rampant thing, but we all... How many belief. single people again were down there? It was 15,000 15, single women. So it's 15%. It's 15,000 people. People. Are single. Either from widow or divorce or whatever it may be. Now, some so of they those, are probably running the gambit. Maybe that's it. Because, I mean, if I was single. Fuck yeah, I'd be there. And I was down there, like. Well, it just sounds like a cool spot to live. Take right. out the sex. It just take sounds out like the a sex. Cool it's spot. a great. Like, that's it. But that's that why is I it. wanted to start with all the things, but the elephant in the room. Yeah, sure. Because if you think about it, what an amazing place to live. Like I ride my golf cart down here. I listen to some music. I get a good meal. I go home tomorrow morning. My big plan is to play golf, and odds are I'm gonna get a hole in one. But if you're right. like, <laughs> let's say you're like a good looking older guy that is. The testosterone's running through you. You're still virile. Like, maybe you're better off, like, moving to, like, Cancun or some, like, uh, South Padre Island or, like, getting a, a spot somewhere where, like, there's just a constant turnover of younger people where you might actually... Yeah, and how do we know that's yeah. not better? Right. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. It, it's, I find the villages to be the single most fascinating social experiment that we have in America. But the reality is... It's growing faster than you know, anywhere else in the whole damn country I year do, over year. It's you know probably safe. Do? It's it's a safe bet. Oh, not all, on top of that, it's the literally the safest place in Florida. Right, and I, when I say safe bet, like you're gonna you're gonna have fun. Yeah, and there's a good chance you're probably gonna get laid. Here's my question: <laughs> If you want to, if you want to, if you want, if you get don't laid. want it, and if you want to be Troy and play pickleball all fucking day, you can play pickleball. Why are we not? Why is there not a reality TV, TV show? Oh, oh snap! Oh, I'd watch the villages. Yeah, Hell, yeah I would yes, watch the dude. villages. I'd watch the villages because then maybe at least I could get a better. No, because the producers would fuck it up and they make it look like right. Everybody's they would fucking. make it look like everybody's fucking. But you'd still watch, you know? Yeah, they'd be like, yeah. they would like secretly place a bowl of condoms on the middle of the dining table, you know? Yeah, the and producer would, puts it out. He's right. like, we're gonna get yeah. after it. All those old people would be like, we're not just, sailors, right? If they just had like <laughs> camera crews throughout the different neighborhoods, like, and they'd be like, they all. Are wearing this is purple Betty in, or I mean, you'd be like, Hell yeah, I'd watch the villages. Hell yeah, they could yeah. do the dating little, at the village, they could do the in person interviews, all you know, one on one camera where like the person's talking, like, I mean, hey, the, bachelor, we moved doing the bachelor here, or the bachelorette from the villages. Oh, lord, oh, oh my gosh, no, that would be awful. I just want to follow the actual, like. Just documentary style, like follow the people around. Someone needs to do a documentary in the villages and really uncover, like, like not a produced like thing to be. Like, I want to see a true documentary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet it exists. I'm gonna look it up. I wish you motherfucker. <laughs> I, I bet it exists where there's just a documentary that tells us the true story of what's yeah. really going on there. But it's fascinating. It is. I find it so fascinating. I mean, it sounds like Shangri La for. Elder people. And there's more people moving in than are dying. So, yeah. I mean, because think about that. There has to be a, a certain percentage of the population that dies every year. What? It Down just, there? It's just math. That's where old people in the, in the, the Florida fact that where it's still people the go fastest, to die? Is, The fact that it's still the fastest still growing, growing metop yeah. metropolis means that you're getting two for every one that goes out. Yeah. Because you don't, you don't check in there to leave. You leave because you can no longer do stuff right yeah. like you have to go to a retirement home or you have nursing care yeah so the alzheimer's kicks in you broke the hip you know all the things yeah. that happen you end up then you got the people who 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 die outright so they leave 
So there's a huge percentage of people that have to be leaving every year, but the influx of people moving in is so much greater that it's the fastest growing metropolis in America. Yep. That's wild. What do you find over there? So there's two. One of the biggest ones, it's called Some Kind of Heaven. Uh, So the synopsis is, at the villages, often called the Disney World for retirees, we meet four residents living on the margins, striving to find happiness. Oh, so this is, yeah. From synchronized swimming to pickleball, the good life is waiting as well as a discontent or the discounted funeral package now at a new and lower price. Boo. Oh, they're giving discounts on funeral packages. Oh, yeah. I don't want to be buried in the villages. No one comes to visit. You want your ashes it is, sprinkled it, over the world. It's just orgy. about how large it is and what's going on, and it's it's you know, Sounds it's like got a, an, uh, it's got a Rotten Tomatoes uh, approval rating of ninety three percent. Where Shut can you watch it? Door. What's it called again? Uh, it is called Some Kind of Heaven. It, where's the streaming? Mm, let's see. I mean, you can see it on YouTube. Yeah, spelled YouTube. with a C. Some, Some kind, <laughs> come kind of heaven. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's it it just it's just a bunch of old there's following old people seeing how they live their day to day. I don't think they're they would I, I think a documentary would do it right, you think? <sighs> if there's some freaks down there like per that loof if that loof of things real, there's gonna be some people that there's gonna be some characters that would be willing to be like, Hell, Hell yeah, yeah, follow Come me on. and Gertrude around. We'll show you a good time. But don't you think, like, look, the average age is 62 and 60, but there's always going to be the 80-year-old who's like, I'm clearly not fucking. I'm yeah, clearly yeah. not getting laid. Oh, Absolutely. got to be a lot of that. Like, if I can get in a round of golf, that's a godsend. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. A couple things of pickleball, some round of golf. I woke up above ground today. In so fact, that's if good. it's a 55 to enter and the average age is 62 to 60, 55 to enter, so you're probably not there past 75. Well, you said, I think you said in one of your stats, and I, I know my, my in laws live in a, they live in a couple 55 and older. Because of the laws, you can't mandate that because then that would be, uh, yeah, they just say 80% has yeah, to be. So there could be 30 year olds living in there. Well, and there is a stat that says about. that if you're under the age of, if you're 19 or under, you have to have a special uh, permission just to stay in the villages. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Get rid of the, see, we get rid you of the young you get rid of the kids. We're back to get rid of the kids in the bathtub. A, and a, <laughs> it can't be a hundred percent over fifty five because then that'd be discriminatory. Like, isn't that wild? Yeah. Probably because when they lived, when my when my in laws lived in a, a fifty five more community in Chesapeake, there were like some forty year olds. So we got to go there at least. We should seriously go there. Yeah. For like rent an Airbnb because they have to let us in. That'd be fun. And just. Go to the concerts, ride the golf carts, check it out, eat in the restaurants, see what it really looks like. I bet you we end up counting like four loofahs the whole damn time we're there. I bet this is far outblown, like blown out of proportion. Yeah. I would think so, but it's still, I think it'd still be a fun vacation spot. It'd be fascinating. Yeah. Every home has a pool. Cruising on your golf car all day. Hell yeah. Just checking it out. Like, I seriously As think someone this who has a place in a campground, like... There's Golf nothing car more cruising fun. is just fun. It's the best. Yeah. And now we only have to go five miles. I can get to three, potentially four different central yeah. villas with, with bars and restaurants. Yep. And like, come on. This would be fun. I think so. I want to, I want to see it. And we're close enough to get to the... I mean, we're not... Like, if 55 and older, I mean, we're not... We're not far away. Life is good. Yeah. Let's dance. Let's check it out. Let me just go play some pickleball and let's school some fucking oldies. Hell yeah. You know, the women will be like, oh, who are you? <laughs> You're schooling these nerds. You're the youngest looking 55 I ever seen. That's right. you damn right. Good jeans, baby. And all yeah. this pickleball. No, that sounds fun. I'd like to see it. I just want to see it yeah. to see what it is. Like when I drove by it, I was blown away at the proportion. Bless you. Bless you. You. Yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to tour it for sure. We do Let's a podcast go. From Let's go. There. Everyone, everyone, we try to sign up. They'd be like, I, I don't even understand how to do this. <laughs> <laughs> well, good news. Purple good IT news. is here. That's right. Purple IT. We'll we'll sign you up. We'll Cincinnati swap you. We'll get your 
your new OnlyFans rolling for you. We'll get you. Ew. <laughs> Ew. I do not want to see that OnlyFans. Somebody does. Oh, somebody God. does. You're right. Somebody grew up just whacking their bags in National Geographic tits. Yes. Just can't get enough of old floppies. Get you a ring light set up on your iPhone. You'll be ready to rock. Oh, yeah. Purple IT yeah. set that up yeah, for you. Of course. No problem. <laughs> Tell your friends. <laughs> Especially with the black loofahs. <laughs> yeah. Discount. Discount. Now you know. Well, there you go. I'm glad we got to talk about what I wanted to talk about. I, I was, I've been dying to talk about the villages for a while. I felt like tonight was the night. It was. It, was it the felt night. right. It, felt it did good. feel right. Yeah. It felt good. If you guys haven't had a check, check, chance to check out Squeezing Lemons, please do. They've got a new episode maybe coming maybe. out. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we do. We have a new episode coming are out. Episode 8. Are y'all into the new stuff? No. Well, we, we still have a few in the bag, so we're good. Good. Okay. So if it takes right. another three or four weeks to do this, we're good. We're clear. We're clear. And if you haven't had a chance to head over to our Venmo, you can always do so. It's... At Inside the Pallet House on Bimba. There you go. And you can always find us on Instagram and Facebook. Pretty easy. Just look up Inside yeah. the Pallet House Podcast or Twitter, which I, honestly, I don't even know why I hype it anymore. I haven't even been putting it out on Twitter <laughs> lately. Don't even worry about it. Go to Facebook or Instagram. You find us there. And if you haven't had a chance to head over to Nectar Sunglasses, you get a good pair of sunglasses for cheap. You just have to drop Abacus in the coupon code, and that'll get you 20% off, which is a pretty good deal. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We certainly do appreciate it. We'll talk to you next week. Cheers. Cheers. Have a good one, you guys. Ooh, that's your new tagline? I think so. Bold. <laughs> Bold. Switch it up on them. I know. Uh, it's a pleasure being with you. Uh, nice here being here. <laughs> <laughs>